Hello and welcome to CTN's Happy Tales. I am your host, Melissa Bondi. We are coming back full circle this episode. It's been over seven years since we last talked at the Last Day Dog Rescue, a no-kill rescue with foster homes located all over the state of Michigan. And joining me from the Last Day Dog Rescue, I'm welcoming back spokesperson Chris Brooks. Welcome, Chris, back to the show. Thank you. It's been a long time. I know. It's good to see you. <laughs> So tell us what has go, what's um, changed or uh, has been happening, I guess, since we saw you last in studio, obviously today we're coming from our homes. Um, we can't have the animals with us necessarily, but yeah, tell us how things have been going. So the rescue's been booming, believe it or not, even through the pandemic, we've adopted over 7,800 animals um, since we founded in 2007. So, you know, 15 years still going strong. Pandemic didn't slow down the uh, need for, for homes for dogs. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. And we are going to meet some, um, get introduced to some of them in a little bit. But yeah, tell us, I guess, how the, the pandemic did change things. I know, um, I would think we're adoptions up. I know we added a new uh, animal to our family during the pandemic. How, how, did, how did that go? Yeah, so the pandemic really affected the rescue in a very unique way. Um, we got a lot of foster applications of people willing to foster while they were home and working from home, which was really great. But we also had um, a lot of returning dogs, which was a little odd. But then our adoptions kind of picked up. Um, everybody wanted a dog. But the big issue we're having even now coming out of the pandemic is all these dogs that were adopted during the pandemic are under socialized, we're having behavioral mm -hmm. issues. We're really struggling. So now our returns are getting high and, and the need to help the community and the people that have adopted from us is high. So we've really been trying to help people out and help get them connected with trainers and doctors and things that they can help them. So it really kind of changed the dynamics of the rescue and, and where our focus was. That's interesting. I, I guess I thought you were going to say that um, the dogs were returned you know, once people did start to return back to, you know, how things were in regards to going to, back to school and work and whatnot. But that's interesting this, to, that you talk about the socialization of the animals being, you know, that's interesting. Um, With people as well as like other animals, you know, so you, you get a lot of fear issues when they're, when they're not socialized properly. So um, we did get a little bit of returns when people start going back to work, but not too bad, not too bad. I mean, our rescue really tries to help keep the dogs in the home if if it's a good fit and if they really love the animal and want to keep the animal. We do what we can to try to help them out so that they don't have to surrender the animal back to the rescue. Okay. So let me ask you how many how many volunteers or foster homes would do you know that you have right now? You know, it, it kind of varies. Um, it's kind of a, a rolling thing because you get mm -hmm. college students in the summer that are home that want to do something and they'll foster and then they go away to school. So then you lose them or you get young people that just graduated from college and they want to help out and they want to foster and, and they get real active and then they have kids, you know, so <laughs> it's kind of like a revolving thing. So I think at any given time, we have probably 25 solid fosters that are continually taking dogs and then you get the spurts of the people that kind of come and go uh throughout the year okay um so what is the process uh, i know it's it might be lengthy but um a quick overview of the process to become a foster or volunteer with the last day dog rescue yeah so on our website which is lastdaydogrescue.org mm -hmm. um you can go on, you can fill out a foster application or a volunteer application or both. Um, I'm both a foster and a volunteer with the rescue. So I foster dogs and then I do um, transport, help with vetting, yeah. all kinds of stuff. There's so many ways you can get involved. Um, so you go in, you fill out an application. Um, if you're looking to foster, uh, we do a vet check and a home visit. Uh, meet your animals, get to know you, and then try to find a pet that is a good fit for your home. Okay. Do you, um, do you, like, what would keep, what, what, I've interviewed other rescues in the past, and every, I feel like everyone has their little, their, their niche, you know, it's like something that sets them apart. Well, and, and I've had you on the show before, and it's, it was super fun and entertaining, um, your organization, but what, what do you think sets, you know, the Last Day Dog Rescue apart? I think 
that, you know, when I started with the rescue, which was about nine years ago, we had like 250 animals up for adoption at any given time. I mean, our oh, rescue was wow. huge. It was almost so big that you couldn't really know every animal. You couldn't really, you know, it, it's hard to manage. So now our rescue has, um, you know, become much smaller mm -hmm. for the amount of years and amount of dogs we're fostering, but the, the rescue has really put a lot of time and, and resources into training and be behavioral consults and dogs with anxiety, making sure they're on medications that help them. So they've really put the focus into taking care of the whole dog and really, I mean, they've done ACL surgeries. I mean, like oh, you, oh. they've done it and, and they really are putting their resources into making sure this dog is completely healthy, you know, when it goes out for adoption. Um, if we have a dog that's heartworm positive, or maybe we know it has an ACL issue or something like that, and the dog gets an application to be adopted, the rescue will still pay for that care after adoption. Wow. Um, be nice. So heartworm positive dogs, we don't neuter them or spay them until after they've went through treatment. Um, and so our adult dogs normally go out fully vetted and fixed when they go to adoption. So if there's a reason wow. health wise weren't fixed, we will pay for that after adoption. So it's kind of nice. It gives people an incentive to adopt those dogs that are maybe a little more high needs because they don't have to put out extra money for it. You know, it's, it's covered. So that's really nice. The other thing I like that's really unique um, with our rescue is when we were pulling dogs out of shelters or, or even out of homes, mm -hmm. um, they are getting rid of mama babies or let's say they have a mom and a dad and the babies whatever we take everybody so we oh. don't leave behind where some rescues might come in and like just take the puppies or or whatever we take everybody so if there's a shelter and someone surrendered a german shepherd mm -hmm. and a chihuahua which is sometimes the combination we get we take them both like they don't necessarily always go to the same home unless they're bonded oh, but we okay. take them leave anyone behind in the shelter. So I really love that. It's really unique. You know, we don't split up litters when we take them from the shelter. If they have a litter of nine, we take all nine. We don't say, oh, we can take two. So it's really nice. Well, that's a big deal. And especially the part about the, the care that um, would be received for the animals from your organization. That's not, that's, you don't hear that every day. That's a big, that's a big deal. <laughs> It is if they're having like a real hard time, we try to get them set up with a force free trainer, you know, positive reinforcement trainer. So we try to do that as well and help them when we can. Okay. Do you now the animals that you receive, are they, well, let me ask, where are they coming from? Most of the time, do you get them from all over Michigan, Metro Detroit, uh, out of state? Where do they usually come from and, or, you know, when they're going to be surrendered? Yeah, so we do some owner surrenders from people that reach out to us personally that need help. We'll do that. Um, we try to pull out of the high kill shelters. Mm. Um, so we again in Ohio, but sometimes um, the people in Ohio will sell, send us some dogs that are from like maybe West Virginia because they're right on the border or Kentucky and things like that. So every once in a while we might get a West Virginia or Kentucky dog, but these are shelters that are in very rural areas. So they don't have people just coming into the, the, the pound and adopting dogs down there. Right. And areas like if a dog comes on their property and is chasing their chicken, they just shoot oh. it. We have oh. babies in them from being shot at and stuff. So it's really sad. So we try to pull out of those high kill shelters where their numbers are really high. We try to put our focus there. I see. And do you receive, um, young young dogs and old dogs and everything in between or do you have a lot of dogs that are um older i'm gonna say senior dogs but you know not puppies yeah yeah we do everything so it depends on the fosters that you have too some fosters might have like a grumpy old dog in the house that doesn't like puppies right or or they might say my grumpy old dog doesn't like dogs but puppies are okay or i can get away with kittens you know so it kind of depends on the foster on what's on our website one thing that we do that's really nice is if someone has applied for a dog and let's say they miss out on that dog or that puppy, we hang on to their application. And then if we get another dog or puppy in that kind of fits what they were looking for, we don't necessarily put them right on the website. We kind of reach out to our applicants first and say, hey, we got this dog in, we wanted to give you dibs before we put it out to the public. So that's kind of nice. Okay. You know? Very nice. 
I did see, I did see your website. Yeah, it was wonderful. It was very um, organized and you, you had a lot of animals. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there were a lot on there um, that at a quick glance, um, a lot of really, you know, wonderful dogs that looked like that needed homes. <laughs> um, do you, so let me ask you, Chris, do you take, do you foster or have um, folks who are take in um, cats or other animals? I, I understand it's a last day dog rescue, but um, do you, do you get other animals? Yeah, we do um, have fosters that just do cats or kittens. Um, we've actually had rabbits before. <laughs> kind of rare. And once when I was really new, we had a turtle on the website, which I thought was hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> as long as we have someone to foster the animal and they <laughs> take care of the need, why not, you know? <laughs> so Chris, let me ask, how many animals do you have that you own, like that are yours? So I just have one personal dog right now okay. and then have a foster dog of my own. And my dog is old and grumpy and doesn't really get along with other dogs. So I have to do the whole siding the house thing, which oh. makes it tricky. <laughs> oh my gosh. So let me ask also if um, someone's interested in volunteering, but not necessarily fostering a dog, they have that, there's an option for that too, to volunteer. Yep, absolutely. They can go to our website, lastydogrescue.org and fill out a volunteer application. And there's lots of ways. And the nice thing with volunteering is you can do as much as you want. You know, you don't, you don't have to go all in. There's stuff you can do from home, just on the computer, sending emails, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, driving down to Ohio with me to pick up dogs when we pull from those shelters and stuff. So there's lots of different ways to get involved, which is really nice. And even fostering, you know, you don't have to foster all the time. And a lot of people get worried about, oh, if I bring a dog in and I have it for a long time, what if I want to go on vacation? Our rescue will actually pay for boarding wow. for us to go. So if I have a foster dog and it ends up being long-term and I have a week-long vacation planned, they'll pay to board the dog, which is really nice. And then we also have fosters that do vacation fostering. So maybe they oh. sign up for but they're just there to like help people out when they're going away for the weekend or going camping or something. So that's really nice too. That's huge. <laughs> that's a big deal. People are always looking for pet sitters. I, I say that like that, but, but yeah, if you're fostering, that's, yes, that could be um, a deterrent if yes, no, we travel a lot or we're away. We can't bring a dog, but I wish we had one. So yeah, that's, that's a big deal. Well, Joe said it's a free way to have a dog. Like, I'm like, maybe when my dog, I'll just foster because the rest of the, have the vetting, the food, the treats, the toys, all the supplies, anything we need, the rescue covers it. So, you know, yeah. you name it. So it's kind of nice. So I'm like, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, what about supplies? So I recently donated some old um, dog beds and, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, items for dogs. Cause that we didn't no longer needed for a bigger dog that we once had. Do you take in those items? Yeah, we do. We take in, you know, towels and sheets and blankets and beds, dog food, anything that has another big thing that like we use that people are sometimes questionable. Um, when they call, they're like, do you take medications? We do like mm. medication. Um, for example, we had someone donate Apoquil, which is an allergy medication. It's very expensive. And so when we get a dog that's on Apoquil, you know, you go pick up the script, it's a hundred bucks, you know, it, it takes a big hit. We solely depend on our donations, you know, so, and the great thing too, our storage unit gets too full with like one item. Mm -hmm. We'll actually reach out to other rescues and share what we have. We share our food. Wow our supplies if we get an abundance of something sometimes a company will reach out to us and they just have boxes and boxes and boxes of the same toy um we'll reach out to other rescues and try to share with them too okay now what um what if you have something someone's watching and they they have stuff they would like to donate do you have volunteers that then would come pick it up does it matter um geographically where they are um and and how would someone get in contact with you if they did have something yeah, so if they just email us, we have a volunteer that will go out and pick up donations. Um, and if she's not available, she'll reach out to someone else. So yeah, okay. we can pick up. I, I also have people like drop stuff on my doorstep. If they're in my area, I'll say, hey, if it's easier for you, this is my address, just throw it on the porch. Um, one time when I had a litter of puppies, they were very 
uh, very sick, this litter of puppies I had, and it took around the clock here, and we had tons of volunteers here, and somebody, and I, and I didn't know who it was, somebody actually had, like, groceries delivered to my house, like, for the people that were caring for the babies, like, snacks, and, and uh-huh. stuff for the babies, the dogs, and it was just, it was a nice thing, pee pads, and so we get, we have a really great, like, community base that supports us, it's really nice. Uh-huh. My, my, like coming home and there's like bags of stuff on the front porch they're like do I need to call first I'm like no we're used to it just leave it on the porch it'll get there Uh, well good to know I I actually have some more stuff I could probably donate I will be in touch with you Chris (laughs) that's great okay I didn't know that um so let's talk a little bit now um about some of the animals that you have that are being fostered right now that are looking for their forever home. You want to talk about those? We have DJ. Um, DJ is about, he's going on three years. He's two years, 10 months. Um, He's 40 pounds. He's all gunshots. He's fixed. Um, He needs to be the only pet. So he's been with us a lot. He um, is leash reactive. So when you're out walking him, he sees another dog. He goes from like super cool cat to like crazy boy. So you kind of have to, you know, be watching around the corners, you know, go the other direction. You know, it's a challenge. And some people are like, nope, that's not for me. Where other people are like, nah, it's a dog. It's what they do. Hmm. Um, Great. Because he's got like um, little spurts of energy where he's like ready to go. But then he's a total couch potato too, which is really nice. And a lot of people are looking for that. You know, he's 40 pounds. He's right in that like perfect dog niche. But believe it been boarding him for over 10 months now because he hasn't found a home hasn't found a foster but again he he needs to be the only pet so that makes it hard no cats no dogs and kids probably over five would be better for him just kids that understand um he is on medication daily for his anxiety with the other dogs and it really helps Mm. keep that so um so he's looking for home he's a great dog I like him because he looks like a cow he's like black and white we have him listed as like a um I think like I see listed as like a Jack Russell mix I think or something but he actually he's got these like tall long skinny legs so um we don't know what he is (laughs) okay Is, is he where is he right now with his foster home no, he's actually being boarded because we don't have a foster for him. Ah, right. He's okay. been a- there though. It's funny. We, we go up and spend lots of time with them, try to get him out when we can, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have another one. What is the other dog that you wanted to mention? We have um, Dempsey. Dempsey's yes. 11 years. He's going on 12. He's our senior boy. Um, he's 50 pounds. We think he's like a shepherd mix. Mm. Uh, he keeps a home with no cats dogs he's been okay with um he just has to be fed separately um and I think like slow introductions would be good for him I think the foster would really love for him to be the only pet just because he's getting up age and you know no nonsense kind of thing like I just want to be an old dog he's great because he's very active he loves to go for walks but again too he can be the total couch potato which is really nice okay um the home with no young kids, older kids like teenagers would be better. But again, he's fixed. He's up to date. He's healthy. Um, he does have medication that he takes daily. His medication is for separation anxiety. So that helps set at bay. So without that, he gets really nervous when you leave, mm-hmm. um, cry and bark, and you can see he gets really stressed. Most of our foster homes, if we're not there during the day, we have cameras on them. So we know. Oh, okay. Doing. That's how they knew he was, he was being naughty, that and the neighbors. <laughs> um, so he's a really sweet boy and I just think he's a little shy when he first meets you but man he's a cutie and then we have um Stuart he's my foster dog um he's going on 10 he's nine years eight months um he's 92 pounds so um these are all his <laughs> he's a little bit old he's a little bit big so those are the dogs you know, least likely to get adopted when you get into the senior dogs. Um, We have him listed as a lab Dane mix. Mm -hmm. Who knows, right? Uh, He was actually adopted at 10 weeks old and then returned at nine years old. 
because they had got a vacation property and he started getting separation anxiety when they were taking him and leaving him there. Um, so he is on medication for his anxiety. Again, it keeps it at bay. He's totally fine when I leave now, which is great. He's fixed. He's up to date on shots. But again, he needs to be the only pet, which is like another strike against him. He really can't be with young kids. Again, the older dogs sometimes have a hard time understanding little kids and they're scary to them. Mm. So so no young kids. So there's all these things that, you know, are kind of strikes. Even young people that are interested in these dogs and we say no young kids or, or no kids even, um, it makes it really hard because you have to ask them, like, are you planning on having kids in the next few years? Oh, right. Because of course. He may not be the dog for you. So that makes it challenging because we've had a lot of good people apply for him. And, and once you start talking, they're like, oh, wow, I never really thought about that. You know, you'd be a good dog for now, but maybe not in two or three years, you know? So um, he had... Um, some bad surgeries too in his mm. so his back legs are deformed so he walks kind of bow-legged oh. um, the great thing like our rescue they we've taken him to specialist after specialist um, and they say his legs just look ugly that's all like there's nothing you can do <laughs> No, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt him, whatever. So, um, so he's, you know, he's on like pain meds for his legs. He's, he's got thyroid issues. So he's on <laughs> thyroid. He's a little, like senior dog um, that kind of has, you know, these, these daily medications that kind of help him get through the day. But, you know, he's, he's a happy dog and a couch potato. He'll play for five minutes. Like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> So he's really, he's really sweet. Um, we're actually taking oh, him to a list um, at the end of the month because now they're wondering if he has Cushing's disease. And I'm like, oh, oh. which is another pill. It doesn't change anything. It just takes another pill for the rest of his life. So poor boy, he might get a part on his page pretty soon for a special needs dog if that happens. I was just going to say, yeah, he sounds almost, uh, yeah. Is that how you indicate if they are a special needs dog? I'll have a little card on next to their name that they're special okay. needs. He, he's been kind of borderline. If this, if this uh, ends up being a Cushing's thing, then yeah, we'll probably He'll probably get a little red heart. But you know, the great thing is, is every once in a while you get adopters that come through and that's what they're looking for. Um, I had a um, and saw an app one day and said, give me the hardest dog you have. And I said, excuse me? He says, I want the hardest dog you have, the dog that you never would think you were going to get adopted. And I was like, okay. And this dog was a dog that we thought we would have to euthanize because we were just not getting anywhere with her. And she was very aggressive. He adopted her. She bit him like three times before he adopted her. <laughs> and he adopted so her for almost a year. She ended up getting cancer. He put her through treatment. And then he came back probably six months after she passed and adopted another dog. Give me the hardest dog you have. So really? Yeah. So these are yeah you, I was just going to say, you have to wonder about people like that. You know, they have a, a big heart and they have a, there's like a, a special, they're special, they're special people to do that. Absolutely. Aw. Pull the dog out of the kennel bed, been there a year, both times, you know? So it was, it was really nice. You know, when you get people like that, that'll give a dog a chance. And they know what they're doing. They know they're saving a dog that is really going to have a hard time getting saved, getting a home. Like they know they're doing that. So it's, it's really great. I mean, you meet the most amazing people doing this. It's, it's really rewarding for I sure. Bet. I bet. I'm just meeting you all those years ago and all the volunteers that came into the studio when we did that show was, um, it was a challenge in itself, but so fun and rewarding for me to be able to get the word out on these animals, um, yeah. but yeah. So let me ask you, we talked about real quick. So we talked about um, these three uh, dogs who are looking for their forever homes, but you have many more and, and folks can look on the, the website, right? To, to find out more details about them and also others. Absolutely, and it's really important. Um, a lot of people will sometimes email us and ask us questions that are on their page. Hmm. So I try to go directly to our website, click on the dog, There'll be brief information like the weight and all that, the breed, um, the age. But then when you scroll down, there's a whole vial that the foster will write about the dog that gives a lot more detail about how they are in the home. The great thing about finding a rescue that is foster based is just that. Like we can give you an idea 
of what it's like, you know, to have a dog in our home, although it may be different in your home, we have a, we know a little bit more about the dog than just going and grabbing one out of your local shelter, right? We can kind of give you some more information about it, but we have extra pictures down at the end of the page. So I really encourage people to go and, and look at the whole page and really um, dig deep because there's, there's lots of information on the dogs and cats there. Well, Chris, we're almost out of time. Is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap up um, today that we may not have touched on? Anything that we'd want to leave the viewers knowing that we didn't, didn't mention yet? So um, we're always looking for fosters. We have a really high need for fosters right now. We currently have um, two dogs that we're paying to board because they don't have fosters. People that have no pets and no kids are gold mines. So if you have no pets and no kids and you really want to foster, we really, really want you. Um, and we have fosters everywhere. We have fosters in Traverse City. We have fosters in Toledo. I mean, we are spread. We have volunteers in Grand Rapids. So we're spread out all over the state. It doesn't matter where you're located. You know, we can use the help for sure. Um, and one last thing is if you go on our website, there's lots of different ways to donate. Again, that's how we you know, support all these animals and take care of them. And that's how they see the specialist. Um, you can do a text to donate. So if you text EDR to 41444. It'll send you a link and you can go on there and you can make a donation that way. So it's really easy. And all the information are on our website as well. On the website. Okay. Wonderful. Well, it was so good to see you again. I, I We're back here. I know you've been there at the, with the organization, you said nine years. So you guys are definitely doing something right and placing a lot of dogs into their homes. It's wonderful. I love what all that you do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate your support too through the years, you know, getting the word out. It's really helpful. Absolutely. Anything we can do to help for sure. So thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you so much. Well, and that is it for this episode of Happy Tales. For more programming from CTN, you can visit a2gov.org slash CTN or talk to us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube at hashtag CTN Ann Arbor. And again, thanks for watching. Hey, man, I thought you were in the shelter, man. Oh, no, dude, I got out of there, man. Well, how'd you do that, man? Oh, man, last day dog rescue. They had a foster come and pick me up, man. A foster? Man, what's that? Oh, man, a foster is somebody who takes care of you while you're waiting to be adopted, man. They let you hang out at their pad, man. They rub your belly. They give you special treats, man. Special treats, man? Oh, yeah, man, I've been getting some good milk bone, man. Well, I know some cats that could use a foster, man. How do you get one? Oh, I don't know, man. Good fosters are hard to find, and Last Day Dog Rescue needs more of them. Well, maybe we should make a video, man, and let people know. Oh, yeah, man. Well, maybe we'd have time for that if you stopped chasing Fifi around the park trying to sniff her butt for five minutes, man. No, I'm just laying some groundwork, man. Help save a life. Visit lastdaydogrescue.org and learn more about our foster program and how you can make a difference. Who has adopted out almost 7,000 dogs? Who has been helping rescue dogs and cats since 2007? Who really needs your help? Welcome to Last Day Dog Rescue. Based in the Metro Detroit area, Last Day Dog Rescue is a foster-based nonprofit that focuses on helping rescue and adopt dogs and cats who need a home. Today, we need your help. Here are just a few of the ways you can get involved. Contact our rescue today. Get involved.